card dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is video number 35 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. So we're back for another retrospective. This is our board from our last one, episode 24. Um, we didn't release a 0 0.3 yet, but it was kind of a distinct enough phase that, and it's been a while since we did a last one, so we figured it would be good to do. So before we go into our new board, we want to take a look at the action items from our um, previous retro. So uh, get a basic CI CD working. I think we can call this one done. Look for opportunities to split stories, which will result in shorter videos. Um, so assign that to me. Everything's assigned to me. Put this in progress. So I think we have made progress on it and I'll, I've got it noted in our retro items in the other board. Uh, pause video for typing more often. I sometimes catch myself doing repetitive typing, but we've gotten better at it. We'll keep that in progress. Um, try out some SVG stuff. I'll still I'll leave that one just as open and consider some refresher training on our spec. Also consider that open, not started. So that's what we've got from our action items last time. We'll migrate those over to our new board, which is a paid feature. So I'll pause. Hey, hey, look at that take my own feedback and get them onto the new board. So I've got my issues moved over and this is my my new board for our unreleased between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 body of work here. So we'll start with what went well. The, uh, the video length was better, more consistent. Uh, the benchmark video videos we wound up with three of them uh, were, were the second one what was originally the second one went long and I split it into two videos so I kind of found a decent spot to split it and then added it and um, we've got um, two videos out of it and they were each shorter it would have been an hour long otherwise uh, I've started to add time references to the video topics in the description, which at least on YouTube comes out uh, pretty nifty. So I'll pause and get, pull up an example of this. So you can see in our description, if you go to show more, let's say you want to look specifically on this pet part where it says throw an error in the script on purpose to fail it you can go there and it'll take you right to that spot in the video which I think as a um, as a user and as a viewer that that's really helpful another particularly useful part of that is that if I ever want to go back and figure out like when I'm releasing a ruby gem if I want to go back to that first one when I released and figure out when did I do that I went back and redid the the description of that one so that I can find those different parts during the video and jump right to them so it's not just for viewers who aren't me it's also helpful for me in terms of organizing things the um, it is more work and uh, takes away from time that I could be creating and developing more videos so it's it's kind of a balance but um, something that could potentially eventually hire somebody out for or, uh, find an intern they don't people don't become interns for one person code casts but all right set up and config videos so if you're just watching this create a ruby gem 
series. I got a new computer probably back in February that I'm doing these videos on. And so I figured if I'm going to have to reinstall all the software and get everything up and running again, I might as well create some videos of those processes. So I did that. They're on our setup and config playlist. So things like how to install Ruby on Rails with Postgres and uh, MariaDB and, uh, or how to install Node.js and Yarn and um, NPM and uh, Node ver version manager, things like that. We created some videos for those as well as a few on setting up Salesforce. So in my, my day, to day job, I do some Salesforce development and I um, did things with setting up Salesforce DX and the Lightning develop, Lightning Web Components development server and stuff like that. So um, continuing on, this is my first time doing CI CD on a Ruby gem and it went pretty well overall. So it's one of those things that when I'm kind of doing these in one take and I'm blundering through this, but hopefully the, these are the same things that you would do if you were trying to go through the steps of setting this up for the first time. Maybe I'll make the same mistakes that you would. You learn from what I did and you're able to do it better the first time than you would on your own. So we had that. The uh, One of the things that, uh, so I created a video to uh, set up Travis CI. I was really not impressed with their open source setup. So they, it took over a week, maybe even longer for somebody to come back after I inquired about the, the open source plan. And by that time I had already moved on to GitHub Actions and have no intention of looking back. So that was a kind of a quick lesson learned and hopefully I'm glad I didn't get several videos into this and then decide to, to back it out. It was, it was pretty quick and early on that I decided that Travis in its current state wasn't for me. Uh, and then a couple of things about the code. So I didn't know this prior to running the, uh, the checks, but we got a maintainability, uh, maintainability rating of A from Code Climate and then 100% code test coverage from coveralls. Uh, so that always good to have the state, technical state of the project to be in good shape when you're teaching people how to do these things. Now we'll move on to things that we can improve. So there is a long chronological gap between videos 26 and 27. If you go to the, the YouTube post pretty much from February until um, June or July, that there wasn't anything published on this channel at all. So that's just a thing that I did other things and didn't publish there and didn't produce any contact for, content for a long time. So it was a something that I wouldn't care to repeat. There are still too many ums and uhs in the audio. There are some already in this in this audio. So that's just something to work on. It's hard to pause and not make extraneous sound vocally or otherwise. Speaking of extraneous things, so my, my mouse movement, I can be a little bit unnecessarily busy with my mouse, which I think the cur cursor is captured on these, so that can be distracting to a viewer. So that's something I need to, to work on self-consciously to get better at. Going back up, so I had a couple of situations where I thought the video was paused and it was not, or where I thought it was not paused and it was, and so I lost a little bit of content and had to work around some, some things there. So that's just something that I need to double check when I hit that pause button in OBS to make sure that I actually am paused when I think I'm paused and I'm actually recording when I think I'm recording. 
Uh, so while beneficial, and I kind of touched on this earlier, adding those time references to the video topics in the description is tedious. So I've got to find where that section of the video starts and put in the correct timestamp in so that it shows up in the description as a clickable link. There were some background noise intrusions in some of the videos. We've got what we would call our, um, our we've got frogs out outside and so depending on the time of day or after it rains or something like that, you'll occasionally be able to actually hear them and pick them up on the microphone if you listen to some of the videos between these two retros. And then finally, I forgot to sign commits when I was pushing to the 0.2.x stable branch in the last video, number 34. So that one I think we can fix together on this video. So we'll uh, create an action here. down to the bottom it didn't go down to the bottom so assign that to me we'll put it in progress and this is so if we go to our repo we're on the 0.2 branch and if you go and look at the commits you can see that the the verified badge didn't carry over on any of these so we're going to try to check out that branch and redo those commits in a way that signs them. We're on that branch. It's up to date with the origin. And we're going to find the last commit where this actually worked as intended, 775A7E. Interactive Rebase. So we've got all of these commits. And if I had to do, like if it was 30 commits instead of seven, I would probably write a script to do it. But for now, we'll just take these picks and instead of doing anything else with them, we're going to um, choose E for edit and that'll stop on each of the commits and allow for me to stop and sign, do get commit amend and sign it. So we're now, so it, it shows you the first one. And so we want to do here a get commit amend, sign it. Edit. I'll pause and sign it so that works. You can see that it works there. And now I'll get rebase continue. And now we've got the second one. I can just hit the upper arrow twice. Coveralls Reborn, that build badge, that code climate, that benchmark script, and update change log. We're done. No commands remaining. Now we've successfully rebased. Make sure that there's no diff between us and origin. There 
isn't. Look at our log. See. Numbers on these are the dates and everything are still correct. And we can we've got seven different ones. We'll push force. And now if we go to this branch. We now have the verified badge on all of those subsequent commits, which is what we want. Go back to our retro, see if there's anything else we want to do as a an action item. I think we've got a decent amount of action items. I'll just add one more. assign that to me and I think that's good so we'll stop there we'll continue on in our next video we'll start getting into a little bit more ob object oriented side of programming on this gem where we'll actually have a die object that we will roll and keep properties on and then a set of dice that we can do things like rolling ability scores and roll four, keep the highest three, roll uh, an attack roll with advantage or disadvantage, those sorts of things where you can take actions on groups of dice. And so that's what we'll start focusing on next. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.